All right, we live? Yes, recording is live. So for everybody watching, uh, this is the 1879 actual play. Who wants to do our recap? You know I'm going to pick you, Lexi, if nobody volunteers, right? Just throw that out there. <laughs> okay, Lexi, our, give us a recap. On our last exciting adventure. On our last exciting adventure, uh, uh, we encountered a three young boys, or four young boys that were being uh, young and dumb and trying to uh, fight the 40 elephants and overtake their uh, uh, territory. We discovered who they were and have apprehended them, though the troll seems to be uh, somewhat of a promising mage. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you noticed, or maybe it was Brad's character who noticed, that the bit of magic that happened to come out of him surprised him probably more than you. Does that sound right? I think it was uh, the two mages that I uh, would have noticed that. I, I would oh, just... right. It would have been either Brad or um, Chris or Joel. Yeah. Somebody else is a mage. My brain's mage. Dead. It's me. Yes. I am the mage, and Brad is also a mage. So it was one of you. It was one of you two noticed that he was probably more surprised and scared than about that than anything. As if mayhaps this is the first time he's done anything magicy. Oh, I believe. What? He's bound, isn't he? I'm pretty sure he got knocked unconscious at this point. Right, he's unconscious. Is the elf bound? Because somebody was bound, and they still have, like, seven or eight rounds. The humans and the elf are bound. There's eight rounds left for the bind spell. Got it. And the st slightly stunned troll is unconscious. Got it. Okay. We're picking right up where we left off. Who wants to do what? So what I do we believe do? we were still trying to get through their thick heads just how much trouble they're going to get themselves in if they're picking a fight with the 40 elephants. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That was the direction you guys were going. I don't know if their thick heads are too thick or not. So who's trying what? I believe I was getting quite exasperated with them uh, when we left. I, 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 I had a gun drawn when one of the party members had got hit. I am putting that down now that the offender is unconscious. But that will hopefully get their attention. Hopefully. Morgana will sigh deeply, look down at the boys, and go, so. I think you need to listen to us so you can understand exactly how much trouble you are in. The younger human basically, and, and it's a stutter, but 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 they're, they're they're just girls. Yes, and so am I. And who would win the fight between you and me at the moment? You can visibly see him pale and kind of gulp air. There's also, you know, me. Do you think you would win a fight against me with 
you know, my access to my guns. Well, when we, when we get the money, we'll, we can get guns. The older brother looks at him and just is like, shut up. They are already aware of you, and they will not give you the chance. You boys are clearly not cut out for the criminal life. I would get out of it before it removes you. The elf, who seems to be maybe a little brighter or a little bit more commonsensical, depending on how you want to view it, wiser maybe, basically says they're right. We kind of don't know what we're doing when we suck at this. I mean, what the hell are we going to tell our parents? The younger of the two humans almost starts to cry. Like, you can tell he's just, like, on that verge as soon as parents were mentioned. The older human boy is just, like, you ever see that look in a kid when they know they've done something wrong, they know they should be in big trouble for it, but they still think they can con their way out of it with their parents, with the teacher, with whoever. But they're they're trying to look chagrined, even though there's that glint that just says, oh, I can work my way out of this. I will look at him and go, I know that look. I use it on my own mother all the time. Don't even try it. <laughs> The elf, who seems to, again, possibly the wiser of the three that are conscious. If you let us go, I'm out. Don't tell my folks. Never happens again. I've learned my lesson. And he looks at the other two and goes, you two did too. The younger one's like nodding. You can actually literally see a little bit of tears in the corner of his eyes, right? The older one's like, yeah, sure. And basically, he the, the elf looks at you and goes, if you let me go, I'll smack him upside his head for you. I'm almost tempted to do that myself. It may not be that simple at this point, boys. You've put on a display in their territory. Whether or not we're willing to let you go is irrelevant at this point. The gang themselves may have something to say about it. They may decide they need to make a show of strength and make an example of you. Boy. You finally see a little bit of nervousness through the elf, who'd been pretty stoic so far. How bad is this girl gang, really? They were already watching you. The only reason it's us dealing with you is I was very polite and very persuasive when I asked them if, I could de if we could deal with you in a way that won't lead to you being dead. Did, did, did they really kill us? Yeah, oh, yeah. Our families? Our family? <laughs> now, the older human, the younger human male is actually cry-crying. It's about the time that you really start to realize that he's probably 13-ish. He's not as old as the other ones who are in their 16, 17. The younger human boys. Literally tall for his age, but maybe 13. The older human boy basically goes, oh, fuck, my dad's going to kill us. And the elf is just like, so stupid. I knew this was stupid. I don't know why I let myself get talked into this shit. I think at the very least you need to go around and make it clear to all the businesses you tried to um, Fleece. offer protection to or threaten, depending how you want to put it, that suggest you apologize. You see the, nod, the elf nod, the younger human male nod. You can still see that bit of defiance in the older human. But he doesn't say that he won't do it or anything. There's just that that stupid, young, defiant, no matter what streak. 
it's not even necessarily that he's not getting it. It's just that he doesn't seem to be willing to admit that he's not getting it yet. But the elf has totally agreed to apologize. The younger human has totally is nodding his head through sniffling tears and his nose is starting to leak and, you know, tea, you know child sobbing type. I'm going to lean down to the older human if a knee ends up somewhat placed in a manner that could be considered threatening or painful. That That's purely happenstance, naturally. Um... Well, God, as a lady, I would never do such a thing on purpose. Um, <laughs> and say to him very quietly, you are clearly a young man of ambition. You do not want family's blood on your hands or your brother's blood on your hands. Now is the time to let walk away and learn from this situation. Maybe find a better outlet for your thoughts. Maybe get a bit more education. Do you have um, anything persuasive as far as skills? Intimidation? I have diplomacy. Diplomacy, try it for me. Probably uh, not as good as intimidation in this, uh, in this instance. But yeah. I'm Maybe, trying to you know, persuade him Slightly different edges to the sword, but they both work. I am trying to her best. While there is definitely an edge of, I am threatening you just to get it through to your thick skull. There is definitely more of an edge of a, I'm trying to be the reasonable one here. I'm trying to give you a chance yeah. to do the sensible oh, thing. No, I so I think but she is trying to I'm stay. Break your leg. You didn't say I'm going to yeah. tell your parents. I'm going to break your leg. So, so I, I feel diplomacy works. Yeah, fourteen. 14, nice. His shoulders visibly slump. And he starts to look down and not make eye contact. And he's like, okay. The elf speaks up now and basically is, and he nods gestures over towards the troll. Is, is he okay? He will be. He's going to have a thumping great headache in the morning, I'm sure. Yeah, but the other part, is he going to be okay? And that's probably the first time you really get that he's probably a little smarter and a lot wiser than the rest of them. Because he also noticed that that was uh, not what anyone expected out of his troll friend. He needs guidance and training. Depending on his proclivities and, and uh, personality, there are a few schools that he may need to join to uh, learn how to control himself. I didn't realize you I knew so much about magic schools, River. I don't say curiously. Let that go. No, not so much magic schools as a group of magic users that uh, perform a common goal. I see. Which one? Cartographers. They are mostly explorers that have have magic abilities. So the elf boy looks at River, Morgana, um, Brad's character. Nigel. And N Nigel, sorry, thank you. Oh, dude. My brain today. It's okay. And, it's... and he has kind of a hard look, but it's not a hard look in the like, I'm violent, but more like. It's the hard look that covers up a scared look. He's not practiced enough at it to get away with people not realizing it. And he goes, I heard it can kill you. If not seen to, it certainly can. 
being able to do that type of stuff. Can it really kill you? And don't yeah. lie. Because adults like to lie. And I'll know if you are. If you are not careful, and with no training, many people are not careful, then it is possible. He says a, a few choice words under his breath. We'll apologize tonight. And if they don't answer, we'll apologize in the morning. What do we do about the 40 elephants? At that, I will look to Morgana and ask, is our watcher around? I will glance around for our watcher. If I spot her, I'll keep glancing for a little bit more. Perception-y. Uh, oh. Seven. You do not see her. Oh no, sorry, I rolled the wrong dice. Also seven, right. Uh... <clears throat> I can't spot her, but um... anybody have Streetwise? I do have Streetwise as a optional. Roll it. Say, August. <laughs> Come on, Augie. August. Uh -huh. Hang on, get my dice out. There's a little boy at the school. And his actual name is um, Augustine, Theodore Augustine. And he goes by Augie. He's a cute little kid. Well, August's full name is August Ezekiel Ford, so, you know. Yeah. It's a good name. So I couldn't hear you. Sorry, I'm referring to myself. Apologies. Oh, okay. Dice gathering. I just, for some reason, sometimes I have trouble hearing you, and I don't want you to get lost in the shuffle. So. Well, they have a odd mic set up because they're so close together, so that probably makes sense. Well, it's, I'm in further away at the moment because to avoid the odd mic problems. Oh, gotcha. Oh, and um, Lexi, can you take notes? I'm one on the road, and two, I uh, chemically burnt the freak out of my hand, so typing is out of out of my realm for a little bit. <laughs> if you want icky thing, if you want icky pictures, I can send them to you later, Lexi. The rest of you don't want icky pictures of me chemically burnt my hand. By the way, not recommending it. Not as much fun as it sounds. No, no, no. I'm not convinced it sounds fun at all, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it, it wasn't. But my own fault, because I touched bleach for too long. So, my bad. Yeah, that's fun. I, yeah. I, so, I'm not allowed to clean ovens anymore because my skin has gotten too thin and the chemicals are getting through quicker and harsher. And so the last time I tried to clean the oven on my own, I had such bad chemical burns that like my hand was bleeding. Oof. So this time, at least it's just the fingertips, which by the way, are very sensitive and that hurts. Mm. Mm. And not good for typing. So what's the streetwise? 10. 10? 18. 18, okay. On a, 10, on a 10, you know that there's a good chance that they might have somebody else watching you guys because the same person watching would be really easy to spot. On an 18, there is no way in fucking hell that you're not being watched, and there is no way in fucking hell, even if that person was taking a piss, right? 
that this does not get back to the 40 elephants. No way in hell that they are not going to know about this. I believe they're going to be keeping an eye. They're keeping he's, an eye on this. Shit on fire. Where, where from? But um, I think it's safe to say they're going to know what's going on here. There's no way they're not watching us to see how we solve this. We solve this problem. I was hoping to see if we could check with them before we let the boys go. And see if I think our best that they let the boys. Go. Go and then I will find myself somewhere to sit nice and private, and hopefully they will approach me as the um to confirm matters. Well, we'll see. Yes. So, what is your plan? I would say this then and turn to the boys you know what you need to do get your friends back get them waken, woken up make your show going around to the shops with your apologies we will do what we can to try and smooth this over with the gang we know where your homes are and certainly they do if there is further issues, we will do what we can to let you know. The elf nods. I'll make sure that everyone gets an apology in the businesses. And and it gives a really hard look at the older of the two human boys and goes, no one's going to cause any more problems, right? And he's like, yeah. The younger one is still crying. He's just not crying as bad. It's that end of crying, crying phase. And the troll is still somewhat unconscious until somebody kind of like shakes him awake. Which they will do after they are no longer bound. So you unbind them? I will look to the rest of the group to see if anybody else has anything else to add before moving to do so. Going once, going mm. twice. No, I think we're done here. Okay. Yes. So once unbound, the two humans kind of, the the older human basically drags the younger human away. The elf goes to the troll and shakes him awake. The troll looks a wee bit freaked out. Just and he kind of looks at the elf, looks at all of you, leans up towards the elf and goes what happened? And the elf just looks at him just as deadpan can be. We got our arses kicked. That's what happened. Damn. <laughs> what about what 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 about what I did? Yeah, we 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 should talk about that tonight. But we've got some um, house calls to make. Wait, they're going to let us collect the money? No, they're not letting us collect the money. Come on. Gets him on his feet. He's a little shaky yet on his feet, but not bad for having been knocked on his ass. And literally, at least the elf and the troll are, go to like basically the, first, the nearest business that they hit and went, go around basically. They knock on the front, which no one's going to answer. They go around to the back, and they knock on the back, and they start making their rounds for apologies. And I think at this point we kind of just have to leave them to it and see if we can make contact with the powers that be, and make sure this is resolved to everybody's satisfaction. Didn't one of you guys know where the 40 elephants like to hang out? I think one of you. I think we had, like we did know the neighborhood they hang out in. Yeah. And I thought you were right like in front of that bar. Oh, before we leave, they don't just hang to, out. to kind of look back down the street, uh, the the fire has gone out at this point, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure that didn't cause any further issues. 
Yeah, burning down the neighborhood is there's not a lot of walking that one back. It would be a very hard lesson in life that sometimes you can't just say you're sorry. This is London. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> no, and not the second time or the fourth. But still, people get very angry about you burning down their neighborhoods. They tend to not be so forgiving. Yeah, it would be kind of hard for us to get paid at that point. Just a wee bit. Pretty sure DeBrett's etiquette guide has a full page on how you don't burn down people's property. Or it might just so be one you... of those unwritten laws of like, etiquette. So, in the 40 elephants work this area, but this is not the area they hang out in. And I was positive that you guys knew which pub they liked, and it's a little bit not yeah, in the, it'll be, it'll of the over, neighborhood. It'll be over in Southwark, which is yeah. across the river, I believe. So, but you yeah, guys I think can... we, had, we did know where they had hang out, and I think it had been mentioned to me. I seem yes. to recall it was mentioned to me when I negotiated. I think so. So, we're probably so... going to go grab a train then. Yeah. Okay. So you guys leave the boys to whatever. I think all watching three, them do... let's just be honest. The elf is going to go around apologizing with the troll in hand. The humans, probably not. But you are leaving that for them to settle out. You guys yeah. have no problems getting to a train. No problems getting on the train. Nobody's even a troll, so that makes it even easier. So, you guys get on the train, you get to the right neighborhood. If you don't know where the bar is, it's not hard to get somebody to pub. It's not hard to get somebody to point you in the correct direction. It is a fairly rowdy pub. I mean, you guys get into the neighborhood and outside the pub there's two guys fighting and there's several women like egging them on. There's loud, boisterous you know, talking and music coming from inside the pub. But it's, it is definitely not as refined of a neighborhood. We'll call it that. I think it's the actual it's elephant and castle pub they hung out in. So that should have a large elephant with a castle on his back above it. <clears throat> I think that's correct. We'll go with it. It's certainly... The, the... It's so well known they named the tube station for it. So it's the name of the borough. You guys gonna go in? Oh, Brad, yep. did you see in the uh, direct message the question I had sent you? Um, let me get over to it. All right, everybody else, what's your? What are you? Just gonna walk in? What are we doing? Uh, make a streetwise roll to try and work out what the best way to do this is. Yeah, I think I'm going to let somebody else take the lead on this one. I don't think anyone would uh, uh, enjoy it gentleman. <laughs> I think Michelle also has streetwise. Now, possibly a quick chat on the way while, while we're traveling to work out what the best approach is of approaching them. That's a really good idea. Very smart. Well, as I say, I think I'll let you take the lead this time. It's I don't think having a gentleman speak to them would uh, gain as much, to be honest. Mm, probably not. Nice no, but you will need an entourage, so we should all stick together. That is quite true. Was that 19 from August? Yeah. Cool. Uh, 14 from Morgana. August, you do especially know that your best bet is to try to get someone who you recognize or think is part of to go get whoever's in charge of, or at least the highest ranked one there. And then basically normal-esque peace talks. And you're pretty sure you know how to recognize them because they tend to be dressed much better than this neighborhood would make one assume one should be dressed as. Um, uh, it really wouldn't matter to them if it's a guy or a girl. They don't really, like, you, you're a girl to join, but they work with guy gangs all the time, so they aren't, being a guy or a girl isn't going to make a big difference. The big trick is, is finding somebody to quietly go get whoever's a prank. Because if you make a big, 
show of it, then it's going to come into a, like if you were to just barge in there and be like, bring me your leader, they're going to take that as an act of aggression. Sure. So the trick is, is finding somebody who's probably with the gang, getting them, and then sitting them down, buying them a pint and talking it out. With the idea that it is not in their best interest to go to war on that street. <laughs> it's almost beneath them. On that street. Because if you want money, you got to not, you know, ruin the businesses. Can I see anybody that's basically been following us and watching us? That are part of the um, elephant. 40 elephants. Sorry, try that again. Has there been anybody following us from the 40 elephants or perception? Everybody can roll perception or awareness if you have it. I'm not even going to bother rolling. I'm sure we've been followed. Yeah, but we need to find them. I mean, that's smart. If you can find out who's following you, you know they're probably one of the elephants, so... Doesn't hurt. So, let me know your number. I think I can probably find some spot someone, because my ethics went to work, and I got 28 on awareness. Yeah, no, you're totally being followed and have been followed out of the neighborhood. It's a um, young orc, sorry, not orc, snark, young snark woman who looks like she's been an adult for only a few years. So she's 19, 20, 21, something in that. Um, she's, of course, dressed very well, which is how they blend in on that street. She's been very patiently following you. Like, she's not rushing it. She's not getting too close. She's wearing a very pretty blue dress. I don't know that that helps. All right, you guys get off the train. If August points her out, I can make an approach and introduce and. August, you gonna point her out? Yeah, sure. Sorry, um, I was just struggling with hearing various people. Um, yeah, he will quietly point her out, but not go, oh, look, look over there, and, you know, physically point. He will be a little bit more discreet. <laughs> what? Quiet, You're not just going to stand on a chair and scream that one? No. Nah, not today. <laughs> not today. It's Chris, traditional to shriek in an inhuman manner at the south of the river. Chris, I can hear you thinking back to Call of Cthulhu. I can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so, yeah, August will pitch his voice so that the group can hear and describe the young orc woman and um, basically say, I think that is the young lady we need to go and speak to to initiate parlay with the 40 elephants. We need to ask her to fetch whoever's in charge at the moment so that we can yeah. speak with them. Or take, take us to her leaders and all of that, yes. Um... If, if you will. Boss, captain, whatever. All right. 
You can try to approach her before you get to the pub or once you're at the pub. Probably once it's fairly obvious, try and sort of leave the station, head towards the pub, and then we'll reach the end of the road it's on, which, as I recall correctly, where stations are isn't very far at all. Um, <laughs> basically, at that point, turn, make it obvious that I'm planning to approach her and wander over. Okay. She realizes at some point when you guys got off the train that you guys notice her or shortly before the pub and she basically quickens her step and catches up with you twirling a parasol good evening um if I may, I believe we need to have a word with your bosses. I can see that. That's probably a good idea. Could you do us the kindness of introducing us? Come on. And she'll look at probably Nigel and Morgana. And basically say, well, at least with us there, you don't look so overdressed. We once were in a suit, start... thank you. <laughs> and starts walking towards the pub. <laughs> Will Smart. Guys... Yeah, Nigel's not the, the fanciest one here. No, I thought Morgana was. <laughs> yeah, Morgana, despite her best efforts, almost certainly is the fanciest dressed. <laughs> I Will Smart. Well, you're fairly fancy dressed, too. Though, I might be able to introduce you to a good parasol maker. I shall say, twirling my own parasol. We'd be interested. We could always use new businesses to, do, uh, to well, conduct business with. <laughs> and she'll wink and walk in. She'll gesture for you guys to take a booth, and then she wanders off, talks to, like, two people, gets pointed to the back, goes to the back. It's probably 15 minutes. All said and done. Plenty of time for you guys to order a pint or something else. And then to the orc mount... Sorry, the snark. The snark will come out, and so will a human woman. But this human woman is much older than most of the other elephants you've met. Like, this lady's probably in her late 20s, which isn't very old except compared to. When you look around the, the, the pub, there's uh, streetwise for those of you who have it. Awareness or perception for those who don't. I want the streetwise ones first. A five for my streetwise. Yeah, only eight this time for streetwise. Eight. All right. Perception from everybody else. Slash awareness, yes. Yep. 11. The visual. Eleven. Uh, seven on awareness for me. Eight. Yeah. From me. Uh, River. If if you're catching this correctly <laughs> and you think you can pick out which ones are elephants, there's probably two dozen of them between right outside the bar and inside the pub where you can see. And they range from the age of probably 13, 14 to mid twenties and lower mid twenties, like 23, 24, 25. So Snark comes back out with this other lady and they sit down at the table and she basically just kind of puts her hand up in the air and some waitress comes and brings her a drink. 
she didn't ask for it. She didn't say what she wanted. Apparently, they just... She's been here long enough. They know what she wants. I hear that you would rush to uh, parlay. I'm listening. I suspect you are completely aware of the situation. I will use the name of the street we were dealing with. I am. Including tonight's fiasco. <laughs> I think realistically everything in that was a fiasco. It's just the perpetrators hadn't realized it yet. They... have been convinced to renounce their life of crime. Yeah, but they sort I... of burnt their name on my street? Or at least attempted to? Yes, they are... Stupid. Very stupid, and... To be frank, I think it would almost be an insult to yourself to have to deal with them. They are... not even worth your time. Yeah, but it's a pretty public insult. And they were pretty publicly um, told off for it. And she kind of looks over at the snark and the snark nods. And then she looks back at you guys and says, I did hear that they were fairly humiliated. Apparently, one of them even cried. Sadly, yes, I think. Glance round. Yes, well, I, they were just children, after all. They were foolish boys who had no idea what they were doing. She kind of glances around the room and goes, they're not much older than any of us. Well, yes, but um, you're not foolish and you know what you're doing. That's true. They have been instructed to make the rounds to apologize publicly to all the businesses that they had spoken to before. Yes, th this was a bunch of boys who've read one too many petty dreadfuls playing at being criminals. She kind of snorts at that. Like it's it's not a very ladylike sound. I smile. I... She looks back over at the snark. How many people saw that they got their asses whooped? And she's like, counting people looking out the window, most the street. And she kind of nods her head a little and goes, all right. But please allow them to know they so much as make a peep on any of our turf ever again. You can't save them. And if you try to interfere probably can't save yourselves either. Not another peep from them. Hmm. I believe that has been made abundantly clear. Yes. yes. Well, enjoy your drinks. They're on the house. And Thank she gets up. Much. Finishes her drink, puts the glass back down, motions for the snark to follow her, and they head back out to the wherever back room area they were at.
Seems like you guys have this all wrapped up. Well, chaps, I suppose we should go report back to the office. Yes. I think that's everything. It's pretty late into the evening at this point. Right, they will... Yeah. They, they Tonight will, or in the morning? I think we'll finish up here and then report back to the office in the morning. Same okay. Time. Anybody right. doing anything overnight before you go to the office that I should know about? No, no. Nothing. Really. Going once. Possibly popping out for a drink to, to, to try and get over the general excitement of the evening, but probably somewhere a little <laughs> bit more upmarket than Southwark. Um, I will join you for a drink, if you wish. Yeah, going out drinking. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's been a rough few days. Yes. This detective work keeps busy hours. So whoever goes out and drinks, they do so. They wake up maybe a little hungover, depending on how much they had to drink but otherwise it's nice and quiet for everyone for the evening yes um, I don't think Morgana can drink that much but she might yeah at least because she's got a proper chaperone with her that would be proper going out drinking so well, she might just be making jokes about that but <laughs> Next morning, fairly bright and early, being, I guess, 9 a.m. ish. You guys go yep. back to the um, agency. And Miss Price is there sitting in that foyer where you usually have your discussions with the tea set ready, <laughs> as if she's waiting on you guys. Uh oh. Wasn't just the whole street that heard then, huh? <laughs> as long as she has been working here since last night. Oh. No, 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 no. But uh, do come in and sit down. I have some possibly very exciting news. Okay. Apparently. Without the hassle. You guys are making a great name for the company. Oh, good. Great name. Wonderful reviews. So much so that, well, <laughs> there's been another job offer. It's a little different. So I didn't accept it on your behalf yet. Right. What is it, so, Raquel? Well, as you will recall, not this employer, but the, the one before. Um, trying to find the father's Abigail's dad's name. Uh, Foxworth. But there you go. So he apparently was saying how great of a job you did in finding Abigail uh, to some other businessmen, and one of them has contacted us on his review. So he's having a bit of a problem. Two out of the last three shipments of his for his company were, well, stolen, hijacked, as they were cutting off the boats at the dock. 
he's positive it's somebody inside the company because how else are they getting the information? What he, he would like is for you to babysit kind of protection, guard duty, so that the shipments do make it in. But while doing so, find out where the leak is who's doing this and hopefully help come to some sort of terms in stopping it. I see. Is this something you think you guys can handle? Well, I realize it's a little bit of guard being on top of investigative work, but Sometimes we have to be flexible with wealthy clients. And there's a bonus in it for this one. You know, I think our last assignment showed we can present a heavy hand if needed. Which is why you all have my full support if you're willing to take this. Including the fact that I made sure that you were going to get a bonus on this one. We here, as a company really like the initiative that our employees take and getting such great reviews with wealthy businessmen is always good for business so but i don't want you to feel pushed into it if you're not comfortable I'm in a do you guys need a moment this. why don't i give you a moment I'm... have some tea i'll be right back and she kind of chitters off, probably drag towards her office. There's tea and biscuits on the the tray, as well as some water, cups, sugar, you know. Hmm. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Well, I th first, I think that it's odd that the shipment is disappearing from the docks. Going so. Because usually the from the docks, it goes to the warehouse not far away. So unless someone's on a deliberately uh, misdirecting the to which warehouse that shouldn't happen I suppose I can see where you're coming from although items do tend to stay at the docks from time to time particularly if they are bound for another harbour and the ships aren't, haven't left yet it'll depend on the goods being transported yes quite Yes, but it's sounding like this is final destination where where things are sh not showing up. Well, we'll Work out exactly in. where they're going missing would be quite helpful. Well, we'll need yes. to get into the specifics once we've accepted the job. But as far as the job itself, I don't have a problem with accepting. Yes. Like everyone else's. I've never thought of myself as a bodyguard, but uh, I don't see why I couldn't do it. Less of a body, more merchandise guard, but yes. So, probably 15 minutes or so goes by, so you guys can talk it through. And Miss Price kind of pokes her head in. Have we made a decision? I can go back, come back in a little bit longer. Oh, no, no, no. I, I think we are, uh, are quite accepting of this job, actually. And she kind of glances around to make sure that that's the general nodding of yes. And then she yeah. sits back down and goes, yes? Yep. And she sits back down and she goes, okay. So. Here's the pay structure. You get your usual daily pay. 
guard duty is going to be paid on the same level, even though it's not as well. It's 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 not as hard work as actually investigating. It's just dangerous work. Um, upon making sure that the next shipments make it securely, because if you don't figure it out before the next, you know, then there's another shipment. You you see how that goes. Each of the mm-hmm. shipments, you'll get half a pound for it being delivered. A piece, sorry, a piece for being delivered. If you guys can figure out who's behind this, the leak in his office, whatever's going on with that, if it is a leak in the office, right, there's a pound a piece bonus. I didn't want to tell you that because I didn't want it to sway you if you didn't think you could handle it. But since you are all, are all in, there you are. Um, she'll open up a file that she pulls out of a drawer. And basically there's an address for a business there seems to be an address for a warehouse as far as which dock it's a different boat it's not a company boat it's a hired out boat so the boat changes and so where they dock is also changed because that depends on what space is available at the time which is why he thinks the owner thinks that this is an inside job because their main office knows what ship and about when it's supposed to come in. But without that information, it would be very hard to target. And it's not like everything on the ship was stolen. Just their stuff was stolen. Now, when he says it happens at the dock, he just basically... Truthfully, what he know is it didn't make it to the warehouse. So whether it happened on the ship, whether it happened on the dock, whether it happened in transport to the warehouse, he's not really sure. In part because the people who are supposed to take it there were found dead or haven't been found at all. Oh my. The ones that were found dead were kind of found dead in the water. Which is not the dirtiest thing that's been in that water. Same. It's also part of the reason you're going to be paid so well for this. The business is a jewelry store. What the shipments are, are either finished jewelry from other parts of the world, or usually stones or precious metals from other parts of the world. So... The other thing that is concerning for him is is it could be a big box that has, like, jewelry that's in pretty boxes that's ready to, to go on the floor. Or it could be a very small box that just has some gems in it, that type of thing. Right. So, again, and they don't mark it like, hi, this is expensive jewelry. Like, which goes back to somebody out there knows what they're looking for, and when it should be coming in. Thus, the, he's pretty sure there's a leak in his office. He has brought up a suggestion that some of you could be, or all of you could be hired to, quote, work at the business to help find the leak, if you thought that would help. But he's not sure that it will, because... A sudden influx of a whole bunch of new people, you know, whoever's behind it probably isn't going to talk to him. But he's really not sure what to do, and the insurance company is also very angry about this because they've had to pay out on the last two. They don't want to pay out on any more. So literally, you guys are being paid, well, the company's being paid, and then you guys are paid between the insurance company and the business itself. Makes sense. Any any questions for Ms. Price?
can you set up a meeting at a pub with the owner so we so that the our hand is not tipped absolutely she can get a message and have a setup um probably at no one which is a kind of pseudo famous kind of but not really streetwise people don't need to roll you've all heard of the no one where are you go you know who are you meeting no one who did you talk to no one I, I think that's where we interviewed yeah so she so she can set that up at the no ones where you guys interviewed um she says that there's private rooms upstairs she'll get a meeting set up and one of those private rooms um she might be able to get it done this afternoon but it could be tomorrow the shipment isn't due for three days so there's a little bit of time but she does want you guys to get started as soon as possible because in case you hadn't noticed this is a big client So she can try to get that done either this afternoon or tomorrow. Do you guys have a preference? I would Maybe say you as guys soon as call. possible, but let's yes. see if there's any other input. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as uh, is uh, convenient for the, for the client. Yes. Okay. Seems like everybody's in pretty much agreement. So she's going to try to get one set up for this afternoon at the no ones. And the client's name is Eddington. I just had that. Where did I have it? There he goes. Eddington Wright, W R I G H T Wright. And the name of the business is the, the Royal Jewels, which apparently has been around for. Many, 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 many years and a few generations. And I guess at some point they were in favor with the crown and got to use the name, the Royal Jewels. Uh, Morgana. I'm trying to think who else would be nobility-esque that might know other than Morgana. I thought somebody well, else might be. Uh, August worked in has worked previously in insurance might be the only one I'd suggest. Oh, okay. And now Waymont is a... Uh, he is a... Well, he was once an aristocrat. Yeah. So anybody in that aristocrat level will know of the company. It is literally probably four or five generations old. Um, yeah. knowledge law and knowledge finance. So. Yeah, it's one of those that supposedly people in the royal family actually go there to get jewelry made. That's oh part of their claim to fame. So that a lot of the aristocrats like to have their stuff done there as well, because then it's being made by the same people who made you know the prince's watch or you know the you know duchess's necklace, whatever. There's a bit of um, notoriety to it and a bit of, I'm trying to think of the correct word. Prestige. prestige. Yeah, prestige. Thank you. That's it. There's a bit of prestige for having bought things there. So you'll find that like, especially like engagement rings, because that makes you look fancy and wealthy <laughs> and upper coming. Now, understand they are a business. Even if you're not aristocracy, if you've got money, they got stuff to sell. But that is their prestige. That's their claim. 
Um, they have a very good and solid reputation as a jeweler. Never been anything even hinted at at shady business. And I'm going to even make your roll for it. Um, and the reason, if you want to know, is that if you're a jeweler and you get a reputation for shady business, you're not going to be a jeweler anymore. It's too easy. People will just leave. They won't go to you if there's a bad reputation. So jewelers are usually pretty cautious about that rep anyhow. These guys, because of part of who their clientele is, they don't mess around with that reputation. It's not worth the risk of selling a, a fake stone over all the money they make by having that high of a reputation. So, uh, the current owner, anybody got anything that they might like, uh, if you, aristocracy or anything that might let them know more about the people in the business or the, the family? Um, I've got secrets to aristocracy, I think. Okay, roll that one for me. Bear with me a moment. Sure, sure. I would just have to shut a door because the store near us was making a wreck at unloading. Six aristocracy. Sixteen. Oh, nice. So, well, God, I may have been jewelry shopping recently. So, Eddington is the probably youngest owner, family owner that's been. Um, he has an older brother who should have taken on the family business and it's a pseudo scandal but not like a big scandal because this happens on occasion the older brother doesn't want to take over the business he wanted to be a soldier like his goals were going into being a soldier and then possibly going into politics he's never had any interest in the family business there's not much of a squabble except the father was very angry about it because that's my firstborn and he should have taken over the family business right yeah. Uh, the father died about a year ago. Uh, nothing amuck with that. It didn't seem like it was. He was the the the. His two children are from like wife number three. He was an older gentleman by that point, and. You know, Edmington's in his early 30s. He just passed away because he was elderly and, you know, there's never been any question. Uh, there's been some rumor mill since you got so high that there is a younger sister and she's got a bit of a wild streak. And Eddington has had to pay out on some extravagant shopping and some other things to keep things quieted down. Most of that wild streak has popped up the last, oh, here you go. This is going to sound so strange. Year or so since her father died. So very obviously not, not something, I mean, she's, you know, her father died. She's gone a little wild but he's been paying things to keep it quiet and calm as much as possible to not tarnish the family reputation there's only the three siblings so the older brother who's in the military and just to put it out there he's he's on the other side of the uh, the looking glass he's in the grub well, somewhere well, yeah which is pretty much where most of them would be at this point sorry what was that, Brad? I said, which is pretty much where most of them would be at this point. Yeah. Which is why I'm just saying you don't have to figure... I mean, this would, wouldn't would be hard to figure out. He's over in the grove somewhere. Has been for... Oh, 
I, I'm sure he got to come back for his father's funeral, but then went back. So he's been there for a bit. Um, the mother... Officer or enlisted for the brother who's off in the army. I presume an officer. officer given their fairly their, their, their fairly high status. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They they totally can they can totally buy rank. He's an officer. Which also again helps him in his political goals eventually. Yeah. Um the mother has never had anything to do with the business. She's been a wealthy wife. So she runs the house, she, you know, directs nannies, you know, she's no longer a spring chicken herself. She's in her mid to late fifties, maybe early sixties at this point. Well, no, she'd be in her fifties. She's probably in her fifties, 55, something in that range. So she's never shown any interest in trying to be involved in the family business. She, she goes to teas. She goes to the Rose Garden. Supposedly, she's even, you know, had tea with the queen. Like, she, she busy off doing that and, you know, donating to charities and stuff like that. Like, she won't dirty her hands to, like, bandage orphans. But she'll put on a, a gala to raise money for an orphanage, if that makes sense. Yes. So, so she's a lady who lunches. Use them. Yep. I suspect a slightly more modern term, but yeah. All right. Anything that anyone wants to try to roll to see if they can figure out anything that they just happen to know, or any other questions for Miss Price? Hmm. I don't think so. At this particular point is probably more. I've when got... we actually go to the meeting. I mean, I have knowledge finance. Would that help? It could. You, you might be able to know if there's any financial trouble that other people haven't heard about. Because if ten. there was any, they would... Ten? Mm -hmm. So, what you know is, is you've never heard of them having financial problems as a company. However, this type of company being hit like that, if the insurance drops them and they keep getting hit, it won't take much for their business to go under. You can't yeah. lose that type of money. The cost of that, you, you can't recoup it fast enough if they keep being hit. And since you're in finance, you would know that the insurance company, if this doesn't fix things, the insurance company will drop them. Because they're not going to keep wanting to pay out. Right. So it's not a, oh, wow, well, the company's hiding, you know, secondary books or anything like that that you know of but it is sort of dire for the company to fix it uh -huh. or they could lose their company it's the um thing about hitting a mom and pop store even if it's a jewelry store versus hitting something giant like walmart where they've got you know a thousand storefronts so even if you stole a truckload of TVs, it might hurt, but eh, whatever, right? Yeah. You know, you lose a thousand pounds in merchandise, and without the insurance to, you know, re get that money back, you can't take that many losses before that's a bad, bad. And yeah. it's a lot of it's going to be in goods they're producing, and you lose those goods, you're having to set back. And delaying yeah. commissions and all of that. Yeah, it's, it's a huge... <laughs> yeah. You, you, you want to know what pisses off the aristocracy? Oh, we promised we'd have that to you by Tuesday, but um, our, our, our shipment got hijacked, so we ain't got shit for you. Yeah, that is another big major issue. They literally, they can't have this continue. All right, anybody else? Sharing nope. nothing. Oh, go ahead. I said nope. Oh, okay. Hearing nothing, we will move. Um, Miss Price will get back to you. She'll send messages to wherever you guys are staying or 
to each of you individually, however that looks. Um, anybody doing anything in the afternoon before the meeting? Because Ms. Price will send you guys a note for the meeting. It's set for about 4.30 in one of the upper rooms. All you have to do is tell the barkeep that you're here for a meeting. And just to throw out some old school terminology that some people might catch on to, with a Mr. Johnson, which isn't quite, but it makes me giggle anyhow. So you uh, just tell the, for, the for barkeeper. 1879, it's a Mr. Fagan. Okay, but I was making a reference. But it's fine. It's Mr. Fagan. Because it's not <laughs> technically a Fagan either, because it's not a middleman. Eh, they still use the term. So, with a Mr. Fagan at 4.30, and they'll tell you which room to go to. Quick question. Right, not, something, do... yeah. not something I was planning to do in the afternoon, but was I aware of the daughter, the, the, the younger sister has a wild child reputation? Do I have an idea of which, if any, establishments in town she's been known to frequent? Um, you got an 18, right? Yes. So, let's say this. What you've heard so far in the rumor mill of the rumor mill land is she should be coming out this season. Yep. And she's um, missed certain galas that she should have been at. She has had a, a wee bit too much punch and according to her mother, been, quote, feeling a little ill and had to leave a couple early. There's been other rumors of her sneaking off without a chaperone. Horror. Uh, well, for, yeah. There's even been a rumor that she was in one of the seedier parts of town at a pub. But that one's sketchy but yeah her Goodness getting gracious her getting drunk at a gala during her season of coming out huge ass no no <laughs> it turns out that most men don't want a sloppy drunk for a wife i mean not in this type of circle you know if you want to do that at home where nobody sees they don't you know right but publicly, not good. Um, there's even been a rumor that she went unchaperoned at some gala out to the gardens. Oh. To Which, that one's a little more, yeah, because that's happened a few hundred thousand times. That some girl goes off and sneaks off into the gardens to get a kiss. You know. Oh. Eh. That one is... Not okay, but often overlooked. Yep. The not showing up to parties that you're supposed to be at is, especially after you've already RSVP'd, is horrendously rude. Getting sloppy drunk, really bad. Yeah. And if the rumors are true of her going unchaperoned into the seedier parts of towns, into pubs, it would pretty much destroy any chances that she gets married. She's also gone on several major spending sprees. And we're not talking like five, ten pounds. We're talking a couple of hundred pounds later. Like major just, she went and bought what the fuck. I mean, part of it would be, you know, insult to injury. For that type of money, she's buying jewelry too, right? Because that's a lot of money. But she's not buying it from her own family company. She's going to competitors and buying shit there. Oh, think about it, though. I mean, that's so much money that can't just be close. Got to be something else. So jewelry or vehicles or something. So, yeah. She's probably not taken her father's death very well and is, you know, being a bit outlandish. Now, you would know what type of stores you can spend that type of money at. Yeah. Because you're not walking... Even the ones that you guys were just at, 
aren't necessarily the dollar signs that this girl is spending. But Morgana would probably have some good ideas, and uh, the financial can probably, if you ask, they, you guys can figure out some of the main really, really expensive stores. Yep. Okay. All right. Anybody doing anything in the afternoon before the meeting that I should know about? Going, going, gone. Mm. That puts us at going to the pub. Seems like we spend a lot of our time in the pub. And without a chaperone either, it's disgusting, you know. Terrible. Can you be your chaperone? The, your group, you obviously have a chaperone. There's men there. <laughs> I hate you to be that way. But chaperone? There's other females and men there, so obviously you're chaperoned by somebody, right? You gotta be, right? right? I mean, we're going as a group, so. Yeah. Uh, you get there, you could... Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, that would be less of a problem. Yeah. I, I think your reputation is okay. For right now. Um, you guys get to the bar, you go up there. Mr. Fagan, 4.30. They go, not a problem. Up the staircase, go to the left. Third door on the left. And then uh, the barkeep asks if you want any drinks sent up. T A L. T. T. I'll have T. Yeah, definitely T. We're we're working. All right, they'll have um a a cart of tea and biscuits sent up. So, you guys go up the staircase, go down the hall, third door on the left. So, Mr. Quote Fagan, or Eddington there, is late 20s, early 30s. He's rather fetching, really. He's got an almost unusual shade of green for his eyes. They're a very bright forest just tinging on a darker, on the edge, green. He's got um, black hair. He's obviously very well-dressed. He's handsome. He's also nervous. Like, it doesn't even take a roll to figure this part out. He's definitely a bit nervous. Why he's nervous, you can try to figure out. That he's nervous, that part's easy. Uh, the room has, like, a sidebar. Um, the table sits 10. It's a big rectangle. There's a window. I'm trying to think what else is in there. Probably some glasses and some water already up there. What are you guys doing? What questions do you have? How many people are aware of shipping schedules? Oh, oh, straight, straight to the point. Um, well, uh, me, I, I'm sure Lucy sees them. Oh, it's, Lucy's my secretary. Um, well, probably everybody in the main office. Um, hmm. Mark. Um, Johnson, he's, um, actually the person who's in charge of handling the, the shipments. So anybody in his office, well, his office is part of the main office. Uh, I'm, I'm, the captain and the people on the ship might know, but they, well, the captain should know, but... I don't know how much of the crew would know, but it's a different ship, so I don't I don't know if that helped. Did that help? We're just getting a list of leads at this point. 
Oh, okay then. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Are your, are your records handled still by paper, or do you use uh, analytical engine? Oh. And he actually seems to brighten up a little bit. Mention that we switched to the the analytical engine. We're we're revolutionizing. It's so. Do you know much about them? Yes. It's very interesting. I mean, the, Lucy doesn't like the darn thing. She says it's. Well, she doesn't like it. We'll just say that. But I think she'll get used to it, and I think she'll like it. She'll grow to like it. So far in the last six months, she has not. But I, I, I think, given enough time, she will. Do you have telephony lines added to your engines, or are you still handling card switches to transfer data? Well, a little of both. A lot of the in-office stuff is done on, on, on the hard data. And... So we do get some stuff in sometimes the other way when we're usually dealing with, well, when we're buying and making sure things are on the right ship. But Mark knows more about that part than I do. It's just that if we try to do paper messages on that type of stuff, it doesn't work well with, you know, I mean, we, we get gems from Russia and Africa and... Um, the, the Americas, the southern parts usually, though, so, yeah. And the telegraphing is better for some of that. I mean, it, it goes through some relays. Oh, I'm sorry, you would know that. I'm sorry, sorry. No, no, that's, that, that's fine. I'm just looking for different avenues where intrusions could be detected from. Oh, I didn't think about it, but, I mean, I guess if they knew what they were doing, they might be able to, right? Oh, dear, maybe it was a bad idea. <sighs> Who do you have for your engine security, or do you have a designated security person? Oh! um, Well, security in general goes under Mark, but Mark hired a man... Uh, no, not a man. It's it's um, it's a woman, but she has a man's name. Her name is Dudley. Sorry, say again. Your audio cut out there. Sorry. So he starts to say it's a man, but then he's like, no, well, it's a woman, but she has a man's name, so I always mess that up. Her name is Charlie Baker. And okay. How recent of a hire is Charlie? Oh, um, well, we just started using the the machines about a year ago, and so she would have been hired shortly thereafter so maybe 11 months I think Mark will know for sure and when did your trouble start um it's just well the shipment problems have just been the in the last month we usually get a shipment, well, oh, no, two months, because the first one was two months ago. So we get a shipment every give or take three weeks, sometimes two weeks, depending on how, well, I mean, if we get a good deal or businesses particularly, like, like around Christmas, it's at least every two weeks. Um, but usually not much longer than three weeks between shipments. I'm and so to, the to allow leeway of... time for shipping. Sorry. And, and of course, you have to allow leeway time for shipping to actually get to you. Right. So we have buyers in different parts of the world who are looking for things for us, and then if they get a good deal, we might buy before we would usually buy. 
and then you know of course it has to be shipped right so the float seems to be about every on average three weeks we get a shipment in um some are bigger than others depending on what i mean sometimes the box is bigger but it's less expensive than the smaller box um especially when like the diamonds coming out of russia um they um but then the, the yes yeah, so the ships come in and the first one was about two months ago and it was a shipment of emeralds from this um this new place in the americas uh it was in the south america and i i think they were calling it brazil and we might be able to get rubies from there but but for right now, we know that there was emeralds, and so the emeralds were taken. And then the next shipment wasn't. And then this last shipment was some gemstones from um, Africa. And that was hit about, um, well, about two weeks ago now. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but then I heard about Abigail. She's a lovely young lady, by the way. But, but anyhow, so I heard about Abigail. And I thought, and I talked to the insurance company, and we, well, we, we found you. So... How believable would it be for you to find out about a delay in the shipping or the shipping being moved up before Mark or Mr. Johnson has? Oh, no, Mark would know before me. All of that goes through Mark before it gets to me. I mean, Mark handles a lot of the, the operation. I, he's been working with my dad for, oh, decades. I, I had recently, since my brother said that he was not leaving the military, had been stepping up, but then, well, father passed, and I, I don't know what I'd do without Mark. Anybody else doing anything? Have any questions? I've got some things going on my end that I'm looking up. Okay. Stuff for, Take your time. But, but anyway, yeah, if anybody else has other questions, by all means, jump in. Absolutely. Do you, do you use a courier service or uh, like Keemsters for a, like a specific one or do you have your own people for, for that task? For taking the stuff from the boat to the warehouse. Correct. So um, we hire those. They're in-house. Mark hires them. And I don't, he, he looks really sad. I, I don't want to ever have to tell another family that, well, that we don't know where or, well, we found them, but they're not coming home. I think that's been almost worse. And just to be clear, all these, um, losses have been robberies during shipment from the boat to your warehouse 
Yes. I mean, the captain said the stuff was on the boat. So it was on the boat. Because, um, I mean, again, different captains, so I, I don't see any reason not to believe that. But, so, so our people would have gone to the boat to take it off the boat and take it to the warehouse. But it never gets to the warehouse, and the people are gone. There's usually a three-man or a four-man team. This last group was moved up to six. We don't know where they are. I had to look a pregnant wife in the face and tell her that her husband wasn't coming home. I don't I don't know what else to do. I mean, offering to, to help pay the bills, offering to, to put the child through school. I, I can do that, but it that doesn't fix this. And he seems very obviously upset about that. Well, we'll do what we can to get to the bottom of this, if possible. Thank you. Have, have you ever had to tell someone that their loved one's not going to come home? I can't say I have. I, I run a jewelry store. I, I never thought that this was something I'd ever have to do. Um, I, he kind of takes us, uh, you know, kind of swallows a little hard, takes a sip of tea, you know, rolls his shoulders back, sits up straight again. I can tell Mark that I've hired you and have him put you on a security for the next one. Or I can tell him that, that you're not, I, I could not tell him that you work for an investigation company. And just say that I hired you to do the job. Or maybe I could just tell you the when and where and you could just be nearby. I don't, I'm not really sure what one does in this. Why don't you just say that um, you hired us to guard the supply, the shipments and whatnot? Uh, yes, um, um, extra, extra guards. I'm thinking we split the difference a little bit here. I'd like to take a look at the at your facilities and possibly speak with Mark and Charlie uh, to look from the security end. Uh, would probably be a good idea if I had at least one other person with us. Um, if we were coming in as consultants, I suppose. Um, I'm an engineer by trade, so I can always pass off is coming in taking a look at the the building security that sort of thing um, and then the you know it, it would be for somebody who is keeping an eye on things it would be entirely illogical if you were not hiring in additional crew to come and take a look at things but perhaps not best not to tip our hand as to how much Yes. Oh, I know. I could I could tell them the insurance company insisted I bring in an outside consultant to, to check it. That, that would that be would sound... wonderful, yes. Yes, I, I can do that. If you want another one of us to go with you, Nigel, August may be the best choice. I think you've worked in this sort of field before, August. Uh, yes, I was also going to ask if I could have a look at your ledgers. Sometimes traces can be found in them. Of course. Anything I can do. Um, it, it, that that would be easy enough. I can. I have them usually in my office. So while we're having a, a, a I guess a, a pretend meeting, you could look at them there. That would be excellent. Thank you. Raymond, so, you also have knowledge of finance, correct? I do, yes. I also do as well. 
I, well, I'm thinking we could play... I, I'm thinking of possible supernatural incursion. So Waymont may be also a good one to have come in with us to take a look, and we could pass you off as... You know, the both of you being the financial end of things, you can take a look at the ledgers, and then Waymont, you could also have a look about astrally. Mm-hmm. In astral space, yes. So if we have the three of us come in, and that would make sense if we we're coming under the the guise of the insurance company, that would work quite well there. Um, and. Morgana River, I don't know if you want to go to have a look at the... To take a look coming from the uh, the docks, or if you have, want to have a look at the, the facilities as well. That sounds reasonable. We, we could potentially even... Morgana, you could even potentially come in as a prospective client and have a look at it from that side of things. Yes. Um, I think our major thing we need to work out is who's got the most, who, who's got something to gain from leaking this information. And do they know they're doing it? So, as a GM, three of you are going in as consultants from the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And then the other three of you are going to be added security. Other two. Oh, the, the two of us, five, five of us. Oh, there are five. Did I mention I'm brain dead? Uh, yes. Five minus three is two. Good, Andy. All right, I got this today. <laughs> I just can't uh, use your fingers. Leave... Well, 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 River and Morgana, do you want to have a look at the the facility as well? Because like I said you could potentially well, come in as prospective clients. Just going. I think place. looking at the docks and the warehouse is probably more useful. Well, I was going to say there's that, and there's, as prospective clients, River could be acting as a lady's maid, and it wouldn't interfere with you joining on as extra security because the other security people would not have wouldn't have seen a customer yeah so you could do both you could go in as a customer together basically and then go in as security the night of and there shouldn't be any major crossover there but it's um... up to you to decide because you don't know exactly like it could be somebody who works the floor you don't know yet. So I don't want to join the security team because if they know about the increased number, they're just going to uh, bring increased guns. Yeah. Being surprised, extra security may be worth more if there's a, if if it's an inside job. Right, but that's what we're saying. If you pass yourselves off as potential clients and just kind of have a look about the shop, it gets extra eyes there without tipping them off. Yes, true. You could also... The docks won't probably do you much good because different boats, different captains. You could yeah. also try to sneak into the warehouse well, I'm, and, and see I, if there's and as I'm, that in. As I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking better of it. We probably want to have all of us take a look at the warehouse again. More eyes on the situation. And now, Miss, he didn't mention any warehouse people. Now, whether it's because he's not thinking straight, but well, he probably, probably doesn't with think rank, to that level, and I don't even know if he interacts on that level. He probably does not. But Mark and I will give likely... you this if you guys ask him about who over there knows, because somebody has to know the shipment's coming in. Somebody has to keep track of it, right? Right, that There's sounds like it would be Mark, so that's there. why I want to talk to him. Yep. If you ask him about it, he'll tell you that Mark usually handles all of that. 
this dude is he's he's nice looking he seems to be pretty soft spoken he seems genuinely upset about parts you know very very upset about certain parts of it but he he's not the type of guy you're going to find down at the docks or the warehouses he's a good face he is not a businessman and he may have become a better businessman if things had gone differently and his father had lived a little longer. Well, he's he's a businessman as in the business owner. He's not the one doing the nitty gritty. Right. He, he's upper management. Yep. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Do you guys want to talk amongst yourselves? Kind of get a feel for what you're doing? Because we can, like, jump out of character, let you guys discuss, and then any other additional questions we can answer. How about that? Mm -hmm. yeah, unless anybody else has any other thoughts, I think if we bring things from here, I think we've got a, a game plan. I mean, well, obviously we got to get more information well, yeah, but, but I think we've you got know, a general we have plan to, to, to start approaching that. Yeah, we. I mean, we have to go and do the thing to get more information to rework our plans. Okay. If you guys are all ready, um, since this is the evening, it'll be the next morning. Mm -hmm. And the so three of you are going in as consultants. Are the other two going in as customers? Yes. Or Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That seems reasonable. Okay. And we'll, so, we'll want to arrive by at different times, so. Yes. Uh, Morgana will tell River to come and meet her at her actual address, and we'll take my actual carriage. Yeah, you'll probably need time for appropriate attire, I guess. Yes. <laughs> and all, all, all the prep work and everything there, so not a problem if you come yeah. in, come in later. I want to hear her tell Morgan, her tell River that what River gets to wear. But where do I keep my gun? In your petticoats, dear. Right. Oh, guns <laughs> do not work well in pantyhose. That's like a garter belt holsters do not do shit. They're <laughs> not awful. They do not work. Oh my goodness. It's what you use in the bu it's, it's what the bustle is for. They could do bustle to the drinks cabinet. You can do a gun rack in one of those things. You can kind of, depending on how fitted, but yeah. But the, the hosiery and uh, garter belts are, trust me, they don't work. Yeah. The worst um, one I think I've ever seen was this garter belt one where they wanted you to put the gun on your inside of your thigh. Most people do not have enough thigh gap for that to ever work. Ever. Surely you should go on the outside of anything. If the dress is big enough, if it's, if it's sturdy enough, if it's a stiff enough fabric you can kind of get away with. You could possibly drop one off the way, see it, but okay, yeah. Don't get me started on holsters. But yes, she's absolutely correct. Where am I putting my gun? My gun, my rifle, my knife. Like, where where do you expect me to keep these things? <laughs> do you know how to use a sword? I will cast River a snake-shaped bracelet and demonstrate how to draw the blade inside it out. Oh, yeah. she has... She, oh, are you back? Okay. Yeah. yeah um, I, have, I have no training with swords. Can't be that hard. Pointy end goes in man. Yeah, the other guy, yes. <laughs> I'll smile. Well, at some point, you must teach me how to use knives properly, and I'll teach you how to fence. 
Well, mostly I use knives to, you know, uh, butcher an animal. <laughs> Hat pins. Hat pins, yes. <laughs> Lethal hat pins are 100% period. Yep. So are bo um, bosom bodice daggers. But yes, hat pins, hair pins, otherwise known as, so was it, uh, silhouette, silhouette, stilettos? Stiletto knives. Stilet yeah. yeah. Those are a thing. All right, so... You two probably have to get dressed and things like that, so you two will be probably a little later than the other three. Just checking all Garner's equipment list. I know I've got several ways of concealing weapons about my person. While we're at this, does anybody need a bit of a break? We've been going for two hours. Ten minute recess? Sure. That I... sounds fine. <laughs> So I have my clock says it's twelve oh one, so about twelve ten. Sounds good. Sounds All good. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah.
So not a common knowledge, but they used to have these things called key guns. And so the guards at like the prisons, they're and it's it's a key gun. Yep. They're kind of uh, yeah. you roboted. Sorry, they're they're basically like a derringer, which means you got to be really close and hope that it's a good, well-made one, or you could lose your fingers. But a key gun is an actual thing, and it mostly looks like a key. Well, I know it is, but it was yeah. Now, I don't know if you could get a hold of one that very quick by that time, but it's a thing. Also, those of you who are going in as consultants, he would have told you to go to a back door, which is the office's door. So I don't forget that you should know that. So there. All right, everybody back? Yep. Give or take. All right. Almost. Um, so, yeah, he. Okay. Sorry, just we won't getting leave, back we here won't now. Go up. Not a problem. Um, those of you who are acting as consultants would have been told to go to the back door where the offices are, not the storefront entrance. And two. I'm probably going to call the game a little bit early, like in about an hour, because pain meds and stuff. Understandable. I showed um, Lexi the uh, pictures. The first ones are from like the day after. And the second set are from like yesterday. So they're healing. It's just apparently we have a lot of nerve endings on your fingertips. However, if I'm going to commit a crime, I should do it now because I don't know that I have any fingerprints right now. Well, uh -huh. Probably not a good idea to announce that when we're broadcasting. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say the same. <laughs> oh, just right. Is that whole premeditated? Yeah. Everyone wants to throw out premeditated. Just to check before we sort of get back into the game proper, you had said it was okay for yes. us to uh, put our rank up. Sorry, what was that? You said it was okay for us to put our professional rank up with using experience and stuff if yeah. we got the prereqs. Yeah. Yeah. No, no worries. Just, just making sure because, yeah. 
Because uh, I have a horrible if, feeling durability is going to become really handy all of a sudden. So, fairly soon. so I have met people who said that they are GMs, like take their literally take their character sheets at the end of sessions and Oof. don't give them back until the next session. And I don't understand that as a GM or a human. If I can't no. trust people to do their character sheets, why am I playing with you? So I've never uh, understood that. And I don't. So for the most again, part, I stay out of it. I, unless I don't trust myself to look after other people's character sheets. Well, see, now that would make sense. I originally the one person I'd ask, I'm like, is it because you lose it? Because I lose stuff all the time, and I can see if we only play here that we just put them, you know, on the shelf, right? And they're like, no. Apparently, they had had people cheating in the past, so they 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 kept the character sheets. I was um, helping with a LARP, and it was already going when I started storytelling for them. And they keep masters of the character sheets so that anybody can at any point call in question. And if the character sheet in your hand does not match the masters, you're out of the game. Because they'd had cheating. And I'm like... It's a game. It's a story. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. Why are you cheating? That's stupid. You have to have some lows and some failures to make the highs better. Like, it's part of storytelling. Yep. So I never understand that type of stuff. By the way, there uh, yeah. in the chat, there are some modern versions, obviously, but... Okay, hold on. Modern versions? Yeah, yeah. so... I'll put that yes. on, on the stream as well. And Modern versions of concealed know, weaponry. There, there's, those don't work as well as men think those work. Granted, but just things that would have been used. Look, look, look. As a woman who teaches this and carries, <laughs> trust me, it's actually very hard to get good holsters for women that fit, that don't show terribly. Yeah, it's it's a thing. The One of the best modern ones is probably the flashbang, which goes basically under your bra, kind of. The trick is, is that your boobs need to be sizably bigger than your tummy. Or it will not work. And then you have to go up a band size, otherwise it's going to dig in like a hose beast. So, and would you believe that none of the guys that I teach gun stuff with ever, ever want to wear the flashbang to try how it worked? Not one of them. They all refused. They're also a bunch of old men, so they also claim they didn't have any bras. Oh, come on. That was kind of funny. <laughs> all right. Back at this. So, we're going to start with... The three consultants who all show up bright and early, office hour early, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock-ish. That sound right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. whatever would make sense for an office consultant to go to their own office and then go off for their dispatches for the day. Okay, so say maybe 10, 11. Mm -hmm. And then Morgana and River should probably go in the early afternoon because ladies of leisure don't necessarily get up bright and early. They have that pleasurable well, lounging around thing. Well, they get up bright and early, but they don't go out bright and early. Yeah, okay, that's a fair statement. And that gives you guys plenty of time to go over to her place dunk river in the you know in the moat and then put her in some fancier clothes have 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 the actual ladies made do her hair river you're going to love it it'd be great she already wants to staff people <laughs> may have to do a graduated system of bathing first we go to the moat then we go to the pond then we go <laughs> Starts with accidentally, quote month. unquote, dunking in the moat. I bathed All right. Month. Why do I need to bathe again? 
Yes, Morgana will lend you a concealable holster because she has one. Okay. All righty. The three consultants, so to speak. You guys go. It's a very posh office system. Um, basically, you have to go up a set of stairs, and then the office is on the second and third floor, whereas the first floor is all showroom. Um, at the beginning of the, when you get up the staircase, you go into the door, it's a foyer. There's a receptionist who, you know, basically, hello, can I help you? Uh, yes, yes, we are the financial consultants. I believe we have an appointment. Yes. I, yes, he left me a note about that. One moment. And he actually comes up and around, and he says, follow me. And he takes you to a door where he takes a key out of his pocket, unlocks it, and says, if you'll go straight up, his secretary, Lucy, will be happy to help you. Of course. Thank you. And after you guys are in the staircase he relocks that door now you can tell if you're worried or just looking you can unlock it from the inside it just stops people from going up that staircase without permission you right. can get out you're not like locked in there it's just some sort of security measure right okay well we'll head i'll, I'll head up the stairs then Nigel yep. also is up the stairs. August. And, and August. Yeah. Yep. Oh, All right. Will, you... Sorry? Oh, we will double check that we can actually unlock that from this end. Just you can do that. Like actually unlocking it, but, you know, I will just uh, convince myself that it's easily done and I don't yep. need to use lockpick to do so. Nope. Yeah. You basically... It's It's sturdier than the old school bathroom ones that where you just like you know twist the thing yeah more like a dead bolty style but yeah you can just untwist it and undo the bolt that's all right then yeah basically when you get upstairs you'll understand why there's the the jewels a lot that aren't set are kept upstairs there are safes on the main floor and then there's some saves on the upstairs. It's a security measure. All right. You guys go up, and the top floor has what looks like four or five offices, so all with their own, like, secretaries. The secretaries are kind of, like, out in the middle, and the offices are kind of, like, in a horseshoe. There seems to be two on one side, two on the other side, and what's obviously a larger one straight in front of you. And most of the secretaries are, like, like, a couple of them are typing on something. Uh, two you can't see. They might be off, and there's, like, a, a storage closet in the break room that probably don't be much to any of you getting coffee or whatever. The one in front of the, like, straight in front of you, which is in front of the large office, stands up, and she is... Obviously a dwarf. She's got gold hair, brown eyes. Um, her hair is in some pretty braids. She's wearing fairly stylish clothes. So she's probably fairly well paid. And she comes around the desk and goes, can I help you? Uh, yes, we are the financial consultants. Ah, with the insurance company. Yes, that's right. Mr. Wright mentioned you'd be coming. This way, please. And she leads you in through a set of double doors into that big office, which has old school mahogany big desk desk. And then what looks like a small conference table with chairs around it. Even a couple of um, seats, like um, like nice wing chairs, and 
There's a couch. There's also a bar and some bookcases. Curtains on the windows. It's all very lush. It's very much done in um, mahoganies and cherry burgundy reds. Makes sense. And Mr. Wright is there, and he's like, oh, oh, good, good. Lucy, um, bring my guests some tea. And she kind of nods, and she walks off. Sit, um, wherever you're more comfortable. Right. Do you, once you guys are seated, seated, and she has brought in the tea and left and closed the doors behind her, would you like to look at my ledgers, or would you like me to show you around first? Um, well, uh, I could look at the ledgers if you want to show the others around. Mm, I think we should all have a look around first. And then we can split off to our prospective specialties. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Fair enough. I'll um I'll look into the astral while we while we walk around then see if anything unusual is present. <clears throat> All right, why don't you give me your first astral roll? Um, briefly, he, you know, this is his office. It was his father's office. He planned on redecorating. He just hadn't gotten there yet. There are two safes in his office. One where the ledgers are kept. And one where he keeps a certain amount of jewelry. They're both hidden behind, like the jewelry jewels are hidden behind a bookshelf. And the ledgers are hidden behind a painting. According to him, the only people who know other than him are Lucy and Mark. Who know where those two safes are. Right. I got a 50 in the astral site check, by the way. I'm sorry, how much? A 15. 15 as in 1 5? Yes. I'm okay. I thought one, I heard 5 two, 0, and I was like, damn. <laughs> I, I'm rolling 1 damn. 2 just for my own satisfaction. Sure. But, you know. What do you got? Hang on, I'm still rolling. Um, nope, that's so. fine. I also got 15. Okay. So, there is nothing unusual about Eddington. He's not pre awoke, awoke, nothing like that. Uh, let's see. There is a spirit that seems to be hanging around. Well, I mean, this is like the 18, this is like the 1890s, so yeah, he's definitely not woke. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? He, he's not an adept. He's just hes just a dude. Mm -hmm. Rich dude, but a dude. But there is a spirit that seems to be hanging around in here. When okay, he takes you out right. there, you have um, this kind of main entry area with some seats and the secretaries. I'm going to count the same role here. There's None of them, other than Lucy's a dwarf, none of things seems out of place with any of the other secretaries. There's also like a a supply room and like a janitorial closet up there. Um, then there's the other four offices. So on one side, go ahead and give me your astral rolls for those, for that side. Okay. I'm going to throw a karma on that, because I feel okay. like, because that's that is not... a good thing to do with karma is use it. Yes. I will, I will uh, adjust it appropriately. I got a 12 on mine. If I can okay. find it on the sheet, dang. Uh, right, current is three, so that puts it down to two. Does karma refresh at all? It refreshes every day. 
Right, okay. Which is why use it. I like that they went to that instead of having to do the whole thing. Yeah, because it yeah. encourages people to use it. Yeah, the whole karma ritual nonsense. Yeah. I, I like that this, in my opinion, encourages players to, to not hoard it, but actually <sighs> use it. 17. 17. Okay. So, on the 12, you don't notice anything on the other, on these two offices. On the 17, I'll get back to you, but... So, the next office he takes you to is Mark. And I'm just going to give you an overview of it, and we can go back and answer questions. Mark's office is the larger of the two on this side. It's in... It's very monotone as an office. Like, one would say that Mr. Wright's office has got a very aggressive kind of feel with this very heavy mahogany with the burgundy reds and all that. It's a very aggressive feeling. Definitely this not about is, I am rich. Mikey <laughs> does that too. But this office is fairly plain and it's very bland and it's very kind of... There's a bit of black and a bit of gray and some white. The most colorful thing is the whitewashed wooden desk. Um, Mark is not in here at the moment. The next office is Charlie's on that side. She is also supposedly down in the basement. Or I don't know that he knows where Mark is at the moment. Charlie's supposedly downstairs in the basement, which is where those uh, machines are all kept at. Also, the main, the big safes are kept down there. Hmm. Her office is done in mostly like purples with a bit of pink. Um, perception, not astral, just regular perceptions. Like awareness. Like awareness would work, yes. Okay. Oh, we should do it. We should do a perception in the other office too. But we'll do Charlie's office real quick. Eighteen. Eighteen. Wow. Okay. Anybody? Else? Ten. Ten. Um, one second here. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. On the ten, the one thing you notice, other than it has a very feminine feel, is that there's several things of fresh flowers. Those of you with 18s notice that the fresh flowers have carbs. So this isn't the she brought in flowers because she likes flowers or had her secretary bring the flowers. Somebody sent her flowers. Hmm. What do the cards say? One of the cards says something along the lines of I adore you, and just has the letter J. One of the cards says something like, you're my everything, with a J. And I think the third one doesn't have any initial or anything. It just says, I can't wait to spend our lives together. But no initial on that one. The handwriting all is different, though. All three cards on the 18. Not gonna make you even try to write. They're all three different handwritings. No, that's weird. Not at all. But I don't know if you guys would know why. Um, straight intelligence. Because I'm not sure what one would put on this other than intelligence. Well, I'm guessing if they just hired it out, then different messengers would write the note for them. Different florists. There you go. You got it. Different florists. Right. He's not writing the card. He's having this order. Whoever he is. Or she. I mean, Jake could be a she. I guess, you know. Just as Jake. Different forests. Uh, well, I will... Um, I mean, the guy's showing us around, right? It's all sort of turned to him and said, so yeah. does... Uh, does the young miss have a, an admirer? Or is this a fiancé, perhaps? Well, I, I didn't know she was seeing anyone, but, I mean... She obviously has an admirer, because it's not like he didn't see you looking at the cards. 
he's never put that much thought into it, to be honest. No fiance that he knows of. He, she's single. She's not married. So now, really quick, give me a perception check on Mark's office. Seven. Okay. Oof. Uh, Twenty. Two zero. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. you're saving it on that one because I got nothing. <laughs> All right. August. There's a safe. Well, there's something. And you, you realize that much like the bookcase safe on Mr. Wright's office, there's a bookcase safe in Mark's office. Okay, cool. Um, if you guys ask Mr. Wright, he didn't know there was a safe in there. He has no idea about that safe, how to get into it, or what's in it. There it is. So, on the spiritual, uh, or on the astral side. Yes. The ghost follows you into Mark's office, but not into Charlie's. So this is a, a ghost as opposed to a spirit then? Sorry, the ghost spirit. I don't know if your character would have enough knowledge to really... It's something that's seeable in the astral, but not seeable with your regular sight. Right. What does it look like? It looks like a, it looks like a guy. You can't tell much as far as features because it's not. It's partially see-throughish and. Is it wearing kind of, clothes? Yes. Well, it, it appears to be wearing clothes as best as you can tell. Like you're not seeing junk swinging. So. Right. I mean, is there any, any outstanding features like a top hat or something like that or a monocle or anything? Give me an intelligence check. Uh, intelligence would be what? Perception? Willpower? Yeah. Perception. Yeah, perception. Sorry, I already screwed that one up. Nine. Nine? Nice. Yeah, it's not a hard one on this. Um, there was a painting in the main office that was pretty obviously either Mr. Wright's father or grandfather. And this has the look of the guy in the painting. See, Mr. Wright, who is the painting in your office uh, a painting of? It's my grandfather. right he was a good man head of the company before your father I suppose yes oh yes for almost 50 years mm. fair enough you go to the other side and the one office is in browns and gold and, and not that mahogany cherry reddish wood it's uh, the wood that's in there is much more um, darker brown no red to it and that makes I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what wood would like a teak maybe something like that and lots of gold and metal bits at least gold looking in like the paintings and you know brass and copper bits where you can it also the let's uh do a perception before i give it thank you perception so many perception rules perception hey it's visual so if you have awareness you can always do awareness uh, oh yes do awareness i got Fifteen. Fifteen, August. Bear with me, unexpected cat on dice rolling area. 
Cats do that. Yeah. They do. The ginger food. I actually right? trained Batsy at one point to pick up the dice and drop it on command <laughs> to quote unquote roll the dice. Yes. Um, I got eight. 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 And Brad? I got seven. Seven and the eight, you notice that the, it, the room is a bit stuffy and there's a little bit of dust. And whose office is this? Well, that's where I was going to get to um, the higher role. There's some papers and you realize that it's the brother's office. Is the ghost vault is in here? Yes. What's it doing? I don't know if you can tell for sure. He's. It seems to be following you guys, but it didn't go into Charlie's office. It went out into the foyer. It went into Mark's office. It's gone into the, the older brother's office. But it didn't go into Charlie's office. <laughs> but it did not go into Charlie's office. Interesting. So the last office, there's uh, actually somebody in, and I'm just going to get his name right. Her name. Haha. Uh -huh. Her name is Evie, and her last name, ooh, I have that someplace. That's why we would need notes. Evie. Hill. Evie Hill. There she is. This office is in some respects like Mark's where it's fairly plain except for it's been done in basically it's, it's, um, it's mostly done in blues and softer blues and Evie seems to be an elf because of them pointy ears, it's pretty easy to tell. Mm -hmm. And it is also the messiest office. There are papers all the heck over this place. Now, they're in neat little piles. But they are literally, there is no surface that doesn't have papers or those um, punch cards or folders, ledger books. And when you guys first walk in, because he, Mr. Wright knocks, you know, a quick, you know, tap, 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 before he walks in, right? She doesn't, until you guys are, like, all the way in there, and, like, ten seconds later, kind of like, oh, oh, hi, well, Mr. Wright, and, and company, hi. I'm sorry, did, did we have a meeting? Did, did I miss something? And he kind of smiles at her and goes, no, 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 Evie. Uh, these are from the insurance company. They're going to help with going over some stuff because of the problems. You know how insurance companies are. And she rolls her eyes and says, as much as we pay them, you would think that they would treat us nicer. And then she starts moving piles off of chairs and then looks, notices that she has two chairs, and there are four of you. And Mr. Rice like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm just introducing them and giving them the layout. We haven't finished our walkthrough. Oh, all righty then. But when, when you're ready and you have questions, you, you come on back. Sure. I'll need more chairs. And she'll head out, and she'll say something to one of the secretaries about finding two more chairs. Uh, perception, and then we'll. I'm going to keep your astral going. Perception. Okay. 16. 16. Okay. I ain't got much. I just got a six. Six. Eighteen. August. 18. One eight. One eight. Wow. Okay. 
So Nigel doesn't notice much that's other than it's quite overwhelming the amount of paper everywhere. 16 and 18, there's an actual system to all of those papers. Like, it doesn't take you long to realize that certain types of papers are all kept in the same type of area, and they are either, like, by date or alphabetical. So basically, she's turned the office into a giant filing cabinet where everything actually is in order... It's just not what most people would have thought of as filed in, in order. The other thing you notice is that she has a wedding ring on. I don't know that that matters. She has a wedding ring on. Obviously, she's some sort of bookkeeper accountant. I'm trying to think what else. So you guys would notice in the office. I don't know that there's much else in her office to notice. Um, actually, on the 18, she has a safe in her office, too. That Mr. Wright apparently had no idea of. Okay, cool. You're starting to really get a feel for the fact that he took on the role of being in charge when his father died and hasn't really really taken over any reins yet, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. All right, so the second floor, so he'll take you downstairs to the second floor, which is where you guys came in originally. And there's a whole bunch of there's like a mail room type of area. There are several smiths, goldsmiths, jewelers, working on making jewelry, fixing jewelry, that type of stuff. There's an in-progress safe. So the jewelers, as you explained this, they would come in in the morning go to the safe, take out whatever it is they're working on, work on it in their area, put it back in the safe if it's not done at the end of the day, or have it taken downstairs to the main floor to be out in circulation to be sold. Um, there's a mail room, there's a break room, there's a janitor's closet on this floor, there's uh, one of these time clock punchy card things, He does not take you on the main floor where all of the display stuff is and the sales stuff. There is a staircase that basically you go down. It You couldn't get there from the staircase. But it also goes down to the basement floor. Now, the basement has several very, very large safes. Like, they had to damn near dug a hole to put these in here or built them in here. Big safes, walk-in safes, right? There's also these machines, which um, Brad's character would know more about than, I think, or maybe August's character also. I think you guys would know more about them. But all of the tele... Graphy type of things come in down here. All of that. There's two security guards down here. There's some Charlies down here. He also seems to have a secondary office down here. Which office is kind of a so-so term. It's also like a storage area where they keep any messages that come in. They keep a lot of the shipping information down here. Um, Astral? Yeah. If you want to roll it. Okay. So that, uh, that ghost fall is in here as well. Is it? <laughs> e okay. 14. 14. And I've so, got nothing that's going to help. Okay. So 
the ghost isn't down here. He didn't go off the off that top floor. He stayed up on the third floor. However, Charlie, Charlie's pattern is um, not your typical average Joe's pattern. She has a pattern that's more complex, like you guys' patterns are complex. Uh... All right. Now, I'm going to leave you guys because I wanted to hop over to the other two. And then I think we might be getting close to calling it. And you guys can write down, like, all the questions you want to ask and think about for the next session to ask Charlie and Mark and everybody else. But that gives you a good overview of the four floors. Is that good? Yep. Okay. So, after um, fancying up river, you guys hop into your family carriage, your carriage, and head on down to the store. The front main floor, the, the customer floor has really pretty bright lots of glass windows lots of really bright lighting they don't quite have fluorescence but they they want as much bright lighting as they possibly can because it makes the gem sparkle better um, you're immediately greeted when you walk in has has she been in here before has she bought things from here um it's possible, but actually, probably she may have some pieces from here, but she's probably never bought them herself because she's only recently really been okay. living in London. Okay. So they don't recognize you, but they immediately are, you know, good morning and how can we, or good afternoon and how can we help you? And would you like something to drink? And, you know, they're just very super polite, very super how can we be of service? Um, Give me a perception check really quick, both of you. Awareness works. Oh, if only I had awareness at uh, six. Okay. River? Grabbing the dice. Nine. Nine. All right. <coughs> but the nine, you notice that very kind of well hidden, there's like metal chain stuff that would come down so that when they close up at night, they they can kind of metal bar the glass without people knowing that, you know, like, without it being an affront to their sensibilities, right? So it gets you know, rolled up and kind of hidden behind drapery during the day, and then they would have it come down. There's a couple of ladies on the floor and a guy on the floor that didn't, like, immediately react and smile when you guys walked in. And something about how they're moving. Give me another perception awareness. Five. River? Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, they're packing. You're pretty sure they're not sales staff. They're security. But they're dressed just as pretty and nice as the sales staff. But they're all three carrying weapons. Um, a nice younger man. It's about the same age as actually Mr. Wright. Late 20s, maybe early 30s, but probably late 20s on this one. Um, leads you to a chair, Morgana. And um, offers, you know, tea, <coughs> champagne. Um, tea, please. 
And he basically looks over at someone else and tells them to bring you tea. And then he pulls a chair close, but not too close. And he's got a very charming... So I kind of need a will save. Oh. First impression. I have an excellent social defense. You so. do. So it, he's purposely being very charming, but you can tell that he's purposely being very charming. It doesn't. That's really seven work. on a will test to just generally. Just there, generally, but, okay. But for the record, yeah, my social, the social defense, defense is eleven. Is the so. correct one. Yeah, the social defense is the correct one, and you 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 beat me on that one. But he's. It's like he knows that he didn't quite charm you, like he can tell. But it doesn't really change most of it. He just kind of continues being very charming and starts asking, <laughs> is there something in particular you're, you're looking for? Is there a piece of jewelry or a gemstone? What can I he will... show you that Basically, would help enhance he... your already natural beauty? Be selling him a whole roll of flannel. Um, basically, I'm looking for several commissions for several pieces. Essentially, I'm just trying to basically ask for a chance to look at a lot of the expensive stuff and imply that I'd like something a bit more expensive, please, just so we can see who's listening in. He is very happy to show you expensive stuff. If you want something commissioned... He absolutely would be happy to um, do some sketching and take it to their goldsmiths. But he starts with showing you anything you basically ask, they happily will show you. Yeah. And he wants you to try it on and he wants you to come see how it enhances the color of your eyes in the mirror. <coughs> and the thing is, is that he is, you can see where... Most people would be totally into how charming this dude is. He goes just enough to be a little kind of naughty, but never enough to be socially inappropriate. Yeah. Like, he has the back to an art. Morgana will probably not be falling for it, as it were, but happily leaning into it yep. a little. Um Now, um, perception from both of you, awareness to see if you notice anybody in particular listening in. Uh, apparently, I'm leading a little too hard, so another six from me on perception. Ten. Well, I mean, ten. Okay. So, you notice one of the security guards, the female one, is very much looking, is keeping an eye and listening in. She's trying to do it without being overbearing on top of you guys but <coughs> she's not really good at it she doesn't have the 12 sophistication that like the sales clerk does there's also one of the you thought it was a sales clerk but you're not totally sure at this point because it's the one he shoot off to go get the tea and it's impossible to tell why is she listening in for nefarious reasons or is she listening in so she can fetch and carry something? But those two are in particular are, are listening in, paying very close attention. <coughs> Anything else you guys want to do on the on the sales floor? Do they do name tags or no? Anything? Too too posh to have name tags. Now you can try to do a perception to see if you overheard names. <coughs> and I'll let you guys do a perception to see if you can overhear. I think that since this is a hearing thing, you don't get awareness. The awareness is just general. Okay. For some reason, I always thought it was sight dice, but I could be. 
There's a so, lot yeah, of modifier so, skills to it that get that are specifically site based. Oh, uh, that's fair. So you guys can roll awareness. See if you hear names. Nine to pick up names. Nine, nice. Ten. Ten. Okay. So the gentleman in front of you is going by Henry, the sales clerk. I don't know that that matters terribly much. The female guard who's listening in, her name seems to be Hilda. And the one who seems to be fetching and carrying and listening in, her name is Sarah. Um, I will make overtures that you know, session I'm quite interested, but would like to see a little bit more, see how things are made, that sort of thing, so I can get an idea of the quality of their work. So try and get a little bit more a tour of Sorry, the behind try the scenes. Sorry, that again. Sort of Going to try and basically angle for a tour of the facilities. I probably won't get up to the offices upstairs. But any sort of workshops and to oh, look he at... basically tells you that that's boring and of no interest, really. <clears throat> I'm sure if you were to show me around, it would be incredibly fine incredible. lady. You would never take such a fine lady into such a, a humble workspace, it's beneath you. If there's a particular gem, he can have some more gems brought <laughs> up from the safes. For her to look at. And again, he'd be happy to sketch any piece of jewelry she'd like commissioned. Mm. There's even a little joke that seems to be going between some of the sales clerks about who's the best artist. So apparently something that all of their sales clerks can do or supposed to be able to do is sketch out commissions. But there seems to be some friendly rivalry about who's better. Having a think, Morgana will. <coughs> Be a little disappointed about not getting the chance to have a look in the bank. Sorry, what? Morgana's a little annoyed. Well, a little disappointed about not getting a chance to look in the bank. She's just trying to gather as much information. Yeah, no, no, I get that. All right. But yeah, so, she's she's most yeah, I think she will she'll certainly begin the process of commissioning a couple of pieces to begin with to, to at least get the idea of what they are, yeah. what their work is like. Let me like. see how good his sketches come out. Give me a second. Okay, well his sketches are pretty impressive. <coughs> Like, I'm not sure if she really had a good idea in her mind, but he sketched basically what she said, and it looks really pretty on paper. And he promises that if she'll give him a couple of days, he can price out if she'll, you know, what type of gold, <coughs> white gold, rose gold, green gold, 
what type of gems she wants. He'll get her a a, a price, and she'll come back in a few days. Yes, and she if will they don't be... have, oh, sorry, and if they don't have something that she likes gem wise, they get new gems in on a regular basis, and he'd be yes. happy to continue showing her anything that makes her heart delighted. Smile at that, um, and we'll. Put in a request for suggestions for the right gems to use, hoping that they will end up being rarer. Given, given her eyes went gold during, yeah, she were. Yeah. Given the coloration my eyes took on after looking glass fever, I, it could be very hard finding something that exactly matches. Alexandrite. Alexandrite is a natural color changing stone. Ooh. In modern times, it rivals the price with diamonds and is sometimes more expensive depending on the diamonds. So that would be a rare one and not as common yeah. to get your hands on. So, and since it's color changing, that might be, I mean, it's not quite the same as your eyes, but you know what I mean. So I believe it's a green purple color change. <coughs> it's been a while. Um, can I get one more perception check from you two as you leave? Oh, four. Four? Yeah, no. Sorry, River, what was yours? Nine. Nine? You hear one of the other, as you guys are walking out, you hear one of the other um, sales clerks. And it doesn't seem like this is in a mean way, but basically chastise him for flirting too much, that he's going to end up in, you know, <coughs> prison or dead if he doesn't watch it. And he basically laughingly playfully says something back about have no fear and you know she might be worth it you might end up in prison or dead or worse married well no no, no. that's too high of a lady for him to <laughs> probably get married to but yes it you know he kind of laughs it off and basically, well, and you never know, she might be worth it. And they basically, like, it's it's a playful chastisement as far as you can tell. So apparently he is a bit of a flirt. Really? I hadn't noticed. Right? <laughs> Just a little bit. Tiniest bit flirtatious. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this. If you guys think of questions, you can always put them in the chat thing, <coughs> and I will try to answer them between now and the next game. Um, next game is, oh, goodness, where's my calendar? Well, we got the pin in the chat here. Um, so oh. right now we're on the 10th. We're the looking at the 24th, but that'll be a late start. Seven, yeah, 11 for us and um, River. All right. You guys are wonderful. 300 XP. AP. Something like that. That cool. sound fair? Cool. Brad, am I being too generous? What's your opinion? I haven't actually spent anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> Now she said we can spend it, so spend it, man. Spend it. I'll spend it when I feel like it. So, Joel, yep. on Hilda as the security, Hilda, suspicious or jealous about Henry? That's a very good question that you don't have an answer for yet. No, because I presume me and River will compare some notes. Targeted. That's also a very interesting question. That I cannot give you any answers to at the moment. <coughs> they're just the thoughts that occurred to me. No, but they're both very good questions. And that's a good place to put them so that we don't forget them. Because they are both very good questions. They're both in you the notes. You wonderful, as always.
And with that, I'm going to go and let the pain meds take my brain all the way. So, <laughs> hey, look, I didn't show all of you the gory pictures of my hand. Goodness. <clears throat> Would you believe that the pharmacist, when I asked if there was a burn ointment that was maybe, because maybe there's a new one out on the market that I didn't know about, gave me the incredulous look of, you idiot, why didn't you go to the doctor? That look. Would you believe that? I mean, we use that look quite often in pharmacy. Like, hey, yeah. I have a 105 degree fever. Go to the ER. <laughs> I have some fairly <laughs> severe second degree burns. But the thing is, is I also happen to know that there's really nothing they can do for it. It's not a third degree where it has to have to have medical. It's only second. Some fairly bad oh, really? ones, especially because of their placement, but. Um, SSD, Mostly what I'll get is yelled at. SSD went, uh, recently went over the counter. It's like silver or something, but it's S-Y-L. Yeah, the silver one's good for her because basically I need to keep the um, infection. I need to make sure they don't get infected. That's the big, and keep moving them as much as I can tolerate because you don't want the skin to scar and not be movable. So it's fine. But I thought you'd get a kick out of the incredulous look that I got because it was, it was a look. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I know exactly. I mean, they probably... Like mupirosin would probably be helpful for locking in moisture and uh, preventing uh, infection. The one I've been using is the um, Neosporin burn ointment specific. The burn one specifically. And it seems to be doing a good job. Like I said, they, they are healing. It's just going to suck for another week or so. No, well, the important thing is just to take care of yourself. The important thing <clears> is <throat> that I should get smarter and realize that I'm not young and I have to, you'd think I would have learned that there's a stupid oven one. But I've used bleach just not for as long of a period and not had major issues until this time. But you'd think I'd get smarter at some point. It just hasn't happened yet. I haven't had external bleach burns, but I used to work in a commercial pool, so my sinuses got burned out quite oh. bad for several years. That's no good either. Yeah, no, I worked past that by this point. See, what I've learned about chemical burns is, <laughs> is it's really weird and freaky because you'll you'll your skin will literally crack and bleed in the burns. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I'd rather have a regular burn over a chemical burn. I'm just going to throw that out. All right. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a good night or day. Make sure you put up questions. If it's something I can answer at this point, I will try to answer it. Otherwise, it's a good place to store some questions until we get answers. Right. Fair enough? Fair enough. Sounds good. You guys are awesome. Good night. Good day. Bye. Rest Bye. Well. Good night. And I with will. that, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the recording here as well. So thank you for everybody who did manage to <coughs> tune in with us. If you didn't manage to catch everything, we will have the video uploaded to our YouTube. I will most likely put that to come out next week uh, just to, to keep the, the chain going. Um, and the next session is planned for the following Sunday, the 24th. Uh, so again, thank you everybody much for uh, thank you very much for everybody who tuned in and uh, have a great rest of your day.